please stand if you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from Daniel. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream, and visions passed through his mind. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw a vision by night, the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts coming out of the sea, each different from another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask them the truth concerning this 
So he said he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. The four great beasts are four kingdoms that shall rise out of the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever. Yes, forever and ever. The word of the Lord. We will now read responsibly Psalm 149. Hallelujah! Sing to the Lord a new song, God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let them praise their Maker's name with dancing. Let them sing praise with tambourine and harp. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them sing for joy on their beds. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all God's faithful ones. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from Ephesians. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the age to come and he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all and all the word of the Lord The Holy Gospel comes to us today from Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. 
Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I invite our young friends forward for the children's sermon. Good morning. I'm glad to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad to see you all this morning. How are you? Good. Um, did you hear that today is All Saints Day? What do you think that means? I know, right? So All Saints Sunday is when we remember those who have died, um, especially those who have died in the congregation. Um, but it's also a way for us to think about what does it mean to be a saint? What do you think? What does it mean to be a saint? For us Lutherans, it's a little bit different. Um, for us Lutherans, um, when we talk about saints, we're not talking about perfect people. Do you know any perfect people? You don't know any perfect people? No. We're talking about people that have had faith in Jesus, and um, when they have um, died, then they are made perfect by Jesus, right? I mean, that's what Jesus died for our sins, right? So that we would be perfect, right? Right? We become perfect after we die. We become perfect, right? Does that make sense? Does that make sense to y'all? Am I making any sense at all this morning? Okay. Someone said no. <laughs> so, so Jesus makes us perfect, and it's after we die. We, we usually don't um, show how perfect we are right now. Um, in this life. Um, but it's a, it's a matter of being faithful. Can you think of anybody who has died that you have known who has been faithful and not perfect? Or perfect, they could have been perfect. Can you think of anybody that you would like to remember today? My great-grandma. Your great-grandma? Can you think of anybody that you would like to remember? My mom's cousin. Your mom's cousin. Mm-hmm. You tell me a little bit more about your mom's cousin. Um, he died in a motorcycle accident. Okay. Did you know him well? No, I wasn't born. You weren't born yet. Okay. Yeah. Can you think of anybody who has taught you the faith? Can you think of anybody that has taught you anything about being a Christian? About believing in Jesus? Anybody at all? You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Our Sunday school teachers. Sunday school teachers, sure. Um, our parents. Your parents. Anybody else think of anybody? Your families. Your families. Uh-huh. Anybody else? You think? We just did this Sunday school today. Who else did you guys against her today? Sunday school. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. 
know. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, so we think about the people that have taught us the faith. We think about people who have died and that Jesus has now made perfect, right? And we know that we are going to be made perfect when we die, right? Right? Yeah, that's our promise. All right. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you thank you for your promise, for your promise to make us perfect. And to be with us always. Thanks. Thank you for all the people who have taught us the faith and help us to teach others about Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much. Oh boy. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for coming up. Have a good week. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing each and every one of us here to this house of worship, that we may with one voice, one mind, one heart, lift our praises to you. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. All Saints Sunday. Saints are the holy ones, the blessed of God. But who are they really? In most traditions, there are spiritual icons and martyrs, and reverence is paid to many larger-than-life heroes in the faith, even those who were emphatically not holy ones. For centuries, after his death, the followers of Epicurus gathered for a feast on his birthday, celebrating the simple joys of living and protesting the oppression of all official forms of religion. And what about the hordes filling, filing past Elvis's grave at Graceland on the anniversary of his death? Or the outpouring at Michael Jackson's funeral? Popular icons carry emotional meanings. But we won't be talking about who isn't blessed by God. And we won't be talking about official lists of saints. The Roman Catholic Church has those lists and they have their criteria. And that's not, those aren't the ones that we're going to be talking about today either. We're gonna be talking about the ordinary saints. In the Gospel reading from Luke 6, on this All Saints Day, Jesus identifies the blessed in stunning particularity. Jesus' words stand at the beginning of his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew and on the Sermon on the Plain in Luke. And Luke's version of the address is briefer and more sharply stated, marked by contrasts between you who are blessed and the Woe to you. In Luke, Jesus spoke directly to his followers. Matthew's version is preferred for its poetic elegance. Luke's account, in Luke's account, this is Jesus' second major policy statement of his reign in the force of poet, prophetic address. Jesus' direct speech is disquieting, compelling the listener to ask, oh, me? Jesus focuses first on his disciples within a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. With these crowds, we overhear his words, wondering if he means it only for the twelve, 
Then we find ourselves specifically included in verse 27 among you that listen. Jesus is not delivering an abstract definition of discipleship or sainthood. He's not listing the qualifications to get into heaven. He's calling all to hear, all to hear to become faithful and effective agents of God's reign here and now. The problem for the hearer is not that Jesus' words are hard to understand. The problem for the hearer is that Jesus' words are very clear and the meaning is so challenging. The rules of engagement of Jesus' reign stand in sharp contrast to the presumed rights of the prosperous to wealth and to abundant food and to good times. The rules of engagement of Jesus' reign stand in sharp contrast to all the goodies of this world because I earned it. In their practice of nonviolence, Tolstoy and Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. all enacted Jesus' words as a social critique and a strategy for change. Gandhi admired Jesus, but when asked his opinion of Christianity, he reported, he reportedly said, oh, it would be wonderful. In hearing Jesus' words, rich and poor alike, glimpse a realm at odds with the way things actually are. All Saints Day is a witness to God's way of blessing the world. All Saints Day is a witness to God's way of blessing the world. Not simply reinforcing the entitlement of the privilege to the way things are, but revealing God's justice fulfilled in mercy. As his kingdom prayer, as in his kingdom prayer, Jesus brought God's way of ruling the whole world the whole world down to earth and invited his disciples into this holy venture. This is not an ideological, ideological agenda or a political platform. This is a vision of God's reign, which he embodied. Jesus knew that people are possessed by their possessions. He lamented how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. But he also concluded that what is impossible for mortals is possible for God. And that's the first miracle of All Saints Day. As the people of God pray in thanksgiving for the saints or light a candle in remembrance of those who have died, Jesus has shown how his reign works. It's not about how a few achieved perfection as the holy ones, who are blessed of God. When we die, the prayer is that the same for the most pious and the most, those regarded as rascals, including us. When we die, the prayer is the same for the most pious and for those regarded as rascals, including us. Trusting in God's love in Jesus Christ, we are all condemned to God. Trusting in God's love in Jesus Christ, we are all commended to God as lambs of your own flock and sinners of your own redeeming. Biblical realism about sinners who are saints means no one needs to pretend perfection. Jesus knew his disciples were about to get it wrong by putting themselves in the way, and God knows that we mere mortals all have the same predicament. But as we remember the saints who have gone, our thanksgiving is also aware sometimes that we got it right and the living Christ was at work in them. Through Christ, and that is the miracle, God's reign of mercy showed through their lives. 
It is also true that those with little claim to privilege have often blessed us and the world with their Christ-like kindness. On this All Saints Day, we celebrate the times when ordinary sinners conveyed God's holy love to us and to the world, probably in unexpected times and places. The first miracle of All Saints Day is about God, whose holy reign is still at work in the lives of the likes of us. The second miracle of All Saints Day is about us and how our lives are transformed. We, forgiven sinners, are called and sent to be ordinary saints in God's world, enacting God's love and justice. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. The saints, the holy ones who are beloved of God, are, by God's grace, mere mortals like us. Us, forgiven sinners, called and sent to be ordinary saints in God's world, enacting God's love and justice. By the spirit of the living Christ, we get to be saints too. Thanks be to God. Amen.
stand if you're able. We confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. United with the saints of every time and place, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Almighty God, in your great love and forgiveness, you call us your saints. Direct us now in your way of servanthood so that the whole world will know your unending love. Hear us, O God. Life-giving God, you shower your creation with blessings of abundance. Sustain us with your blessings so that we never cease to protect and find joy in your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all nations, you raise up leaders to govern the nations. Give us clear vision and a spirit of wisdom in the upcoming election. The and empower the newly elected to work for justice and harmony. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you look upon the lowly and call them blessed. Bless the poor, the hungry, and those who are suffering persecution. Comfort those who mourn, those, who ha those having to make hard decisions, those who are lonely, and all who are in need. We pray especially for those we have named on the prayer list, and also Carolyn, Cody Golden, Tony Treglia, and the family and friends of Dixie Thompson and Nancy Fultz, and those we now name silently or aloud. Hear us, O oh God. Merciful God, you redeem your people and seal us with the promise of your Holy Spirit. Guide the newly baptized as they embraced their new identity as holy children of God. Hear us, O oh God. Your Lord, we pray a special word of thanks for healing for Brian Mackey and all those who have... Um, felt your healing touch through doctors and nurses and technicians. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, we also pray a special word of thanks for families, for new families, for the wedding of James and Jess, for the new family member, Penelope, to Bridget and William Kettle. Thank you, Lord for all the ways you continue to bless us with the gift of family. Strengthen all families that they may be places of love and comfort. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for all the saints who have gone before us and those who have died this past year, including Kevin Plogger. Through their faithful witness, we continue to set our hope on Christ Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. 
Rejoicing in hope, we lift our prayers to you, most gracious Lord, trusting that you have received them in your care. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please exchange that peace with one another. Please stand. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful god through our savior jesus christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And gathered into one, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord.